the the biggest piece of advice would be do it without fear. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know what it is, what the biological difference is between men and women in in this in this fear factor. But I've spoken and worked with just some phenomenal women that are like, ah, I don't. I don't know if I should really go for this promotion or I I don't know if I can do this. It's that fear that pulls us back, the fear of failure. Without Fear of Her Future podcast is for women who are passionately pursuing financial freedom, using multiple streams of income and real estate to accomplish their goals. We are here to empower you to be brave, dream big, and design a life that you love that inspires others to do the same. I am your co-host, Teresa Todd, founder of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and author of the book, Without Fear of Her Future. And I'm Melissa Baker, a real estate investor and fitness coach specializing in turning properties from drab to fab. I'm here to help motivate and inspire you to build your dream life because girl, you deserve it. Today, we're thrilled to welcome a woman who embodies the spirit of fearless leadership and motherhood. As the CEO of Spartan Invest, Atlas Rental Property, and Corinth Construction, this one-woman show not only built an empire generating a combined revenue of almost $50 but she's also a devoted mother and a committed advocate for young girls and young women. Let's welcome Lindsay Davis to Without Fear of Her Future. Lindsay, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, you make me sound a lot more interesting than I actually am. <laughs> I think you are pretty interesting. Yes. Uh, I think yes, our listeners are going to really intro. enjoy this today. Yes, we have a lot to get to. Lindsay, can you just kick us off by sharing your journey into the world of entrepreneurship and what sparked the creation of Spartan Invest? Yeah, absolutely. So really quick, just just so you know, and your audience knows the the one woman show, I have, I wish I was that cool, but I've just been so very fortunate to have a great team surrounded, uh, surrounding me at all times to, to really help catapult Spartan to where it is right now. Uh, Spartan Invest actually started as me and my business partner, we left our corporate jobs. We were interested in real estate in a time where uh, no one was really in real estate in 2010, 2011. And we were purchasing properties um, off courthouse steps, flipping them, like you said, from drab to fab. Uh-huh. We were, uh, you know, selling owner occupant properties that were HGTV flipped, staged. They looked beautiful. But, you know, in, in a real estate time where not proper properties weren't falling off the market and in, you were started your own business, you were responsible for your own pay that if you didn't sell a property in the winter months or in a bad quarter or a slow quarter, then you didn't make any money. So kind of in, in a panic, we went out and purchased several rental properties in the Birmingham area and started managing them on our own. And then kind of the that's when the light bulb hit. Uh, those properties, the residual revenue and income from those uh, rental properties is what really sustained us through times where properties would move on the market. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really what, what connected us to the turnkey model. And hey, this is where the value is, or we saw the value in real estate. This is where uh, the service we can provide investors is this cash flow, is, uh, this passive income. And, and that's kind of really where the Birth of Spartan Invest and our turnkey company and the property management company as well, Atlas Rental Property, began. I love it. Wow. You know, what I love about that is when somebody just falls into something, you kind of are doing something and you see, hey, this really works and you find your niche that way. And I love it. That's exactly what you did. Absolutely. And it's kind of crazy because it wasn't like we weren't making money at flipping the property. So it was pretty daring to one, leave your corporate job and then get into the company uh, after about two years and making money, not great money, not growth, uh, but making money and completely changing the business model. Yeah. Yeah. Go girl. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So you've led Spartan Invest to be recognized among the 5,000s fastest growing companies for eight consecutive years. So how have you done that? That's amazing. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, like I said, you know, I, not to sound 
cliche. I think that there's a number of factors and that our business model alone allows for rapid growth. Uh, you know, when you're growing the property management company as well. So our business model essentially is that Spartan will purchase the properties. We go out and find them. We renovate them in-house. Then we sell those properties to investor clients. And then we have our property management company in-house that manages it. Yeah. So our, yeah. our goal so and mission it- is... The yep. one-stop shop for real estate investors. Yeah. That's what our, our dream is. Uh-huh. And and so growing the turnkey side, but then also being able to simultaneously grow the property management side along with uh, that the turnkey is, is what's really helped our growth. And then honestly, the ability to have such a phenomenal team behind uh, behind all of those efforts and those goals is really what's put us on the Inc. 5,000 fastest growing companies for those eight consecutive years. Wow. Well, that is quite impressive. And I agree that it it takes a team, that your team can make you or break you. So when you find a great team, well, you got to hold on to them. Absolutely. I am a firm believer. I know that every business book you read is going to say this and every motivational speaker you're going to listen to is going to preach this. But there is truth to that. If you take care of your people, they're going to worry about the profits for you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I love how you are. Uh, you're getting in on both sides of it. You're, cre- you know, get finding the property, flipping it yourself, then the property manager selling it, then the property manager. So I, I love all of that. Kind love of a, a perfect way to kind of marry the, yeah. the active investing with the passive investing. Absolutely. And most of our investor clients are not in the Southeast. They're not in Alabama. They are from areas where rental properties or real estate investing isn't necessarily conducive for their market, like your Southern California and Hawaii, where those returns, your rate of returns, you can't buy a property for $150,000 and see any kind of cash flow that just doesn't exist in those particular markets. And then managing that from a a city away, let alone states yep. away, is almost yep. impossible. So we we take on that burden and really want to handle every step of the process. I love it. I love oh, it. Wow. So have you faced many challenges over the past year or so in the real estate industry as an investor and as a CEO? What, tell us, let's talk about some of the challenges. Well, I, I think that every CEO and, and everybody in real estate has faced uh, numerous challenges over the course of the last few years. You know, the we saw a pretty dramatic shift in that we started Corinth Construction, which was our, our new construction company that builds properties for both owner occupants and investor clients. Um, we started that in 2020, which, by the way, in case your listeners didn't know, it was a terrible year to start a new construction <laughs> company. <laughs> we did not know that at the time. Uh, however, so we started our, our new construction company within our all of our entities. And so we saw a pretty dramatic shift, obviously, with uh, material increases, but then also a demand surge in that with interest rates being forced, you know, mm-hmm. sub three for investors that we, we couldn't buy or build fast enough to meet demand. We had difficulty projecting uh, what costs were given the fluctuations and inventory shortages, labor shortages. And then all of a sudden in the summer of last year, it completely flipped Mm -hmm. in that now we were able to acquire kitchen cabinets and the demand uh, decreased pretty pretty rapidly with the increase of of interest rates. So it's been a pretty big challenge in the investment space on, on real estate. Now, we have seen a lot of our investors, our core investors, take the opportunity to get the better properties in um, the higher interest rate markets. You know, we've, we have a lot of investors that um, when prices were, properties were getting bid up, they kind of stepped back. And now that we're able, there's not as much competition. Yeah. Uh, they're stepping in and, and purchasing, you know, really good inventory and acquiring, getting promos, et cetera. So um, there, there's been a lot of challenges. And then on the property management side, you're talking about we went uh, a year with an eviction moratorium and where the federal yeah. government told us we could not evict residents that were not paying. So that, you know, just 
showed a, a, a lot of challenges in and of itself. So there's been a, a good bit of challenges in the real estate world over the last few years, but it's it's still the most, even though despite those challenges, it the demand is still there from our investors because of how proven it is over the last 80 years of real estate investing data, how proven a asset and really what it can do to help build your wealth, just overall yeah. what rental properties, um, what the all the benefits are. And, and anybody that's investing in the stock market right now can probably attest to that Absolutely. pretty accurately. Yes. I love everything that you just said. I just want to like really repeat it. Um, yeah, there's you're we all have to admit with any kind of a business entrepreneurship, whether it's investing or whatever it is, there's always going to be tons of challenges. However, um, I mean, just like you said, uh, uh, you know, couldn't even, you know, make people pay their rent for a year, but yet you're still saying, and I am such a believer, I wouldn't do anything else. This is still the most proven thing. And so I think so many people hear that kind of stuff and they're like, oh, and so they just run from it. And uh, I, I'm saying run to it. Don't run from it, but be ready for some challenges. And, you know, but you just can't let them freak you out. Stay with it. And that's the beautiful thing about real estate is that time pretty much fixes all the problems. If you just hold on to yeah. these properties long enough, it all comes back around. I completely agree. I think that's probably the biggest mistake that a lot of investors make when they do enter the real estate investing world is that they just don't allow it to, uh, they don't allow the time. They yeah. don't allow the time to fix the the tenant that did not pay because guess what? The next tenant that's going to get in there is going to pay and they're prob they're going to stay in there for a really long time. I use my personal examples all the time and that I've purchased a property in uh, close to our home me and my husband, I mean, we have our own rental portfolio. We rented out that property. The tenant moved in and never paid a dime. Ooh. And this is what I do all day, every day, right? <laughs> how, did that, how, did this, how did this happen to me? And, you know, we had to go, unfortunately, had to go through the eviction process. The very next tenant has been in there since 2018 and no issues at all. It takes great care of the property. So it, yes. it's really just being aware of those inevitable issues. Absolutely. But also, I'm not sure the difference between uh, the acceptance of the issues within the stock market and other investments. I think everybody knows like, hey, if, if Coke had a bad quarter or if Disney had a bad quarter, they don't necessarily cash out of Disney, exactly. right? It's just they had a bad quarter. And you need to approach real estate investing in that same attitude. Yes, love yeah, it. For sure. Well, you've had had a lot of challenges as we talked, but it sounds like there's a ton of success as well. We were excited to hear about your accolades from the Stevie Awards for Women in Business. Um, you were named International Woman of the Year and Female Executive of the Year. Can you talk to us Ooh, about that? That's, that's amazing. I, I think that that's, uh, I, I appreciate that very much. I think that's more um, having a great marketing director, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I, I think that there's just so much opportunity um, out there for for women to to take advantage of, and and I love these awards that that highlight women um, that are making strides and that are in leadership roles and and making a difference in companies and communities. So I'm very honored to to be named one of those. Yes. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome, and it's such a great example and motivation for for women getting started in this field and in real estate investing to to see someone and be successful and. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So you're not just a very successful businesswoman, CEO, but also a loving mother to three children. So how do you juggle the joys and the challenges of motherhood and this demanding career? Yeah, it's it's hard. I, I'm <laughs> very honest. You know, it's it's a challenge. It very much is. And I um of course all three of my kids, none of them don't want to not do an activity, which is great, right? <laughs> but I've got soccer and football, baseball, basketball, I mean, gymnastics, we're, we're all over the place all the time. And again, I, I think that being able to manage it is setting those hard lines. And that I learned after my son was born, 
that there was there was a line that I was not going to cross in my career or my personal life and that I wasn't going to I, I wasn't going to be away from them for only but so long. And I, I try to strike that balance continued on, even though now he's he's nine and I still try to um, maintain that balance and that, hey, sometimes I'm going to have to work late. Sometimes I'm going to have to go out of town and sometimes I'm going to have to wake up really early on a Saturday to get some things done. Um, but I, I'm going to leave in leave early to make sure I make all of the games and as many of the practices as I possibly can. And I think just setting those setting those boundaries up front and knowing that I'm not willing to cross them. Yeah, that, right. that those are my non-negotiables. Yeah. And I think having that laid out beforehand is really beneficial to um, to get to a point where you don't look back and be like, man, I hate I missed this. Yeah, or right. you might be drowning. And, it, and honestly, it's it's the partnership as well. I talk a lot about the team. But my husband is is my team. He's my partner, my equal, and and he takes on so much responsibility at the house. Um, so I can focus on my career and my job. I love that. That's amazing. That's amazing. I agree. Setting boundaries and time blocking and like looking at the calendar and saying, okay, these days right. this is game day and this is work day or this is game hour and this is work hour. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I live and die by that calendar. And yeah. when I when I can leave early from work, I, I do. If if it's kind of a slower day and I can get out of there, I'm gonna take advantage because I know that those are there are gonna be those days where I'm here late. And and so trust, just trying to always make sure that I'm I have that in in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have one son, and then are the other? What are the other two? Are they girls? So I have or? two boys, two, two boys, and one girl. My daughter is the youngest. She okay. just turned seven. All oh. right. Well, so let's talk about uh, Girl Spring Inc. Could you tell us a little bit about your involvement with it's a nonprofit, I believe, and how you are and why you are empowering young girls and women? Why is that so close to your heart? Well, I, I absolutely uh, love this organization because they are focused on being a source of information to young females. They have groups and they'll go to schools to, to talk to girls and really in the age group of middle to high school where studies show where girls tend to drop off academically. And I don't really understand why. I think that there's a, a lot of reasons, whether it's pressure or they think that maybe that's that's where they're supposed to be. But I'll never forget the way I got involved was I got reached out to by the owner of the Birmingham, I guess the Birmingham chapter of Girl Spring. And she asked me to come speak at one of their events. I said, sure, yeah. So I went up there, I went to went to the event on a Saturday, spoke to these girls, and this one girl raised her hand and said, so you you have this job, but you have a husband and children. Like, ha, like that's OK. Like you can do that. And it just it I, I don't know why it just floored me. Yeah, because she honestly believed that you could not. It was one or the other. She uh-huh. was like, I, I didn't I didn't know that you, you know, I mean, I didn't know you could do that. And And I think it's because of some of the women that. Um, maybe that had spoken, did not have, you know, hadn't had yeah. children yet. And and that she was just floored for, from someone actually being, having both. Yes. And, and that's really what pulled me, um, what, what pulled me to Girl Spring is just making sure that uh, the information is out there that, yes, you can pick and choose. If you want to be a stay-at-home mom, be a stay-at-home mom. Do, yeah. do that. If you want to do that, do that. If you want to run your own company, do that. You you need to pick what you actually want to do mm-hmm. and be comfortable in your choices and in your skin and, and take that leap. And that's what Girl Spring really is is all about. Um, it's just really the empowerment of girls to, to make the choice of what they want to do and not feel like they have to pick and choose either one. Yeah. Nice. Is yeah. that is that a local organization or is that a nationwide organization? It is. It's a local organization. Okay. I think it's kind of spread a little bit out throughout the state, but it is a local organization. Gotcha. Very, very nice. Yeah. I like that. Getting these young girls and letting them believe they can do. That's exactly do right. To yeah, I, I, I love it. Speaks. It speaks to. It speaks to me. Yeah. Um, just personally, and then of course as as a mother, and it as it should. I'm sure to all of the mothers out there yeah. of 
of daughters or that and want them to never be handcuffed because these conversations are not being had with little boys. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, you are so, so true. Right. That's so true. So to all the women out there that are dreaming of starting their own business, what words of wisdom would you like to share with them? Oh, um, man, I've, I feel like I have a, a, so much that I would want to say. I think the, the biggest piece of advice I would be do it without fear. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know what it is, what the biological difference is between men and women in, in this in this fear factor. But I've spoken and worked with just some phenomenal women over my career and that are still employed here at, at Spartan. And I'm, I'm honored to be associated with that are like, ah, I don't I don't know if I should really go for this promotion or I, I don't know if I can do this. It's that fear that pulls us back, the fear of failure. Mm-hmm. And and to the, all of that, I say, OK, so what? So what if you fail? I, I can promise you that that if you go through and if you had a whole other podcast, I could walk you through mm-hmm. every single failure that I've done and that yep. the company has done <laughs> that I've dragged the company into. Of, of failures that we've tried things and they just have not worked out and yeah. that's okay. And I think that um, a lot of times that's what holds holds us back from taking that plunge. Obviously, you know, don't don't be a bull in a china shop if you're looking at becoming an entrepreneur. Make sure you do your due diligence and that you you're making the the right decisions. But if you want to try something, what is the worst that could happen? Mm-hmm. What you it blows up and it doesn't work. Okay. Well then you go do another job. You know, I mean, if if Spartan were to blow up tomorrow, I would be devastated, but I would, I'd probably have to go find a a job waiting tables until I found something else. You know, (laughs) it's just knowing that that's a possibility and being okay with that possibility is, is what allows you to take that step. Yeah. Right. Right. I I agree. Yeah. Well, you've achieved a lot uh, in your business and with your with your companies. Could you share what you believe are the key factors that have helped propel you to where you are today? Oh, um, I think that I think it's the 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 fear factor is a very is a very big one. Um, I, I think having that that correct mindset of hey. If, if the worst happens, then it happens and, and we'll regroup and um, we'll come back from that. Uh, but again, not not to sound too cheesy, but it, it is the team and it's making sure that you put the, the right people on your team. Um, it, we are we have over 60 employees. We are in four different markets and I still interview everybody that uh, is applying to a position here. And that I think that that's probably the most important thing I can do as CEO is um, is be a part of our onboarding process and maintaining our culture and making sure that we are hiring the best people that will buy into our goals and our mission. Mm-hmm. And that's really the best thing that I think you can any leader can do is just surrounding yourself with those particular people and you're never going to get it all right. You're not. I have hired very wrong fit in the past. Yeah. And and it and it stinks, right? Because you you have to move on from that, and you, a lot of times it ends up with you taking on responsibilities after uh, after a, a separation, I guess you could say. But you still have to you have to surround yourself with the people that um, that are going to do the best, and that's really the key advice, I guess. That, that sounds kind of that. corny, and I hate that. No, I wish I, I wish I had true. some more profound, but it, it's just been the truth. It is uh, the with, truth. With yeah. Both of those things, fear. I think that is the number one thing that holds women back is mm-hmm. fear. Yeah. And we have to do it afraid it, because you're never going to wake up and the fear is going to be gone. So you just have to do it afraid and then surrounding yourself with an amazing team. That is, I, I love both of those. I do believe those are key factors in any kind of success. I, yeah, I, I will say, I will share this, uh, <laughs> This story and probably one of the reasons why I fell in love with my husband um, in that we actually worked together in our, our corporate job. And I had this was I was very young and I was up for a promotion and I was just talking to him. We were just friends and I was talking to him and um, and I was like, 
I just, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. That's just, that's a lot of responsibility. Like I was saying all of this uh-huh. to him and he was like, Lindsay, if he can do it, you can do it. What are you talking about? Ooh, you know? And he yeah. just like kind of sat me and he's like, what, what is the difference? Do you think that he's better than you? Do you think that he's smarter than you or more capable? Uh huh. I'm like, well, no, no, not necessarily. He's like, then what, what is the difference? And it just, it just hit me. I'm like, you're right. Like why, why, Yep. Mm-hmm. why am I even sitting here questioning and yes. uh, questioning that? So yeah, I, I do. Um, I give, I give him credit for, for that kind of slap in the face early in my yeah, career. Yeah. <laughs> good for him. I love that. I love that. Okay. So finally, what is the future looking like for Lindsay Davis? Can you give us a sneak peek into what exciting projects that, you know, what's next for you? Well, um, so we actually, we've got a good bit uh, kind of uh, on the, on the burner back burner, maybe in the, in progress or in the works for Spartan Invest in that it's more of the growth of our turnkey entities and that we want to be able to handle every piece of the real estate investing uh, part. And one of the things that COVID very much highlighted for us, it was already a growing issue prior to COVID, but it very much uh, shined a light on the necessity for trade uh, work in this state, in this country as a whole. Yeah. And that the average, the average age of contractors, licensed contractors, electricians, plumbers, HVAC, um, home builders is, is constantly increasing. And so the, the people that are coming into these trades, they are not at a pace in which can replace. And, and I think that that's going to be a very big issue in the next 10 to 15 years um, across, uh, across the board for all real estate. And so that's what we are working on currently. We just launched our HVAC um, side department uh, through our new construction company. And so now we're going to be able to bring our installation of uh, HVACs in-house where we were subbing that out. And the the goal over the next um, five years is to do the same thing with all of the trades that that we need. And that's that's a a benefit because we're able to oversee that process but then also control that cost to keep that cost down for our investors. Yes. Wow. Very That's nice. great. I mean, I think you would agree, probably uh, dealing with the contractors is the most difficult part of real estate investing. 100%. <laughs> yeah. And when they're all yes. your employees, instead of just, you know, hoping for those subs to show up and all the things. Uh, yeah, I love that. Great idea. So good it luck is. with that. That is. Thank you. Yeah, we think that that's one of the the biggest benefits of buying with Spartan is that we just take that piece alone off your hands. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Really quick, Lindsay, you you mentioned being in four markets. Can you tell us what markets you're in, and then can you tell our listeners how they can connect with you if they'd like to? Absolutely. So we are in our main offices in Birmingham, Alabama. So we service all of Central Alabama, Tuscaloosa, then Montgomery, uh, North Alabama, and the Huntsville, Decatur, Athens, that North Alabama market. Uh, we are in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and of that that southern area of Tennessee, and then in the north of Georgia as well, kind of a little bit south. We call it all of our Chattanooga market, but it's two markets uh, for two different states. Wow. And they can, and if you are interested or if you want to learn more, we have a ton of content on um, on our website and you can reach out to us at spartaninvest.com and uh, fill out one of those contact us forms. You'll see some information too about a forward commitment that we're offering investor clients and where they can get an interest rate uh, below 6%, something that we buy down for um, for our investors in bulk. So if they wanted to hear more about that as well, there's more information on our website. I love it. Spartaninvest.com. So reach out, get some good new yes. information. Absolutely. That's awesome. So Teresa, let's just talk about a takeaway. Tell us, I mean, she well, gave us so much information yeah. here and has done such a, I mean, built such a yeah. business. Lindsay, very impressive what you've done. I love it. I love what you've done personally, but I love what, how you're standing for women and helping just to inspire women that anything is possible 
anything is possible if you're willing to just um, step out there and and do it. Mm -hmm. It's great. Absolutely. Thank you, ladies, so much for having me on. I was great. I appreciate it. You bet. You bet. Well, if you have not subscribed to Without Fear of Her Future podcast, hit that subscribe button today for new episode reminders. As we wrap up, I have a special invitation for all of the women listening, an invitation to safeguard your financial future and begin your legacy. Click the link in the show notes of this episode to grab tickets to the next Without Fear of Her Future Masterclass. I can promise that your future will thank you, your children will thank you, and the generations to come will remember that you were the one who broke the economic cycle in your family. Thank you for joining us today. On behalf of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and Teresa Todd, I'm Melissa Baker, encouraging you to be brave and dream big.